Welcome, everybody, to day four of the Ultimate Swimmer March Madness NCAA recap show. We are covering Division II men's and women's happening in Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama. And we are also going to talk about Division I women's in Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm Josh Davis, joined along with my co-host, Noah Yanchulis. I love day four. I love the team scoring and the rivalries. I It's just so much fun. So Noah, let's just jump right into the results from Division II Men's and Women's Championships. Yeah, absolutely. From Birmingham, Alabama, whatever you just said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll get right into it. It was a good, uh, good finish for everybody. I mean, I think we kind of saw that Queens was going to have the upper hand on both the men's and women's side, but Drury on the men's side made a really nice push. Um, but yeah, started off with the mile, uh, Francesca Baines, senior from Queens. She, she took the title 1630. And then, uh, Sophie Lang from Queens, a freshman, she finished second, just three one hundreds behind. So, uh, that was a really good, good race between those two. Um, and obviously Sophie's going to only a freshman. So she's going to be a front runner for that event for years to come. And then wow, Alice- I w- I, sorry. Oh, sorry. And then Allison Weber was third, but I, I was fascinated with all these splits. If you look at these splits, you know, they're all 30 points, 30 points, one after another, yet only three 100 separated them at the finish. That's just crazy. It really is. I'm looking at, if, if you look at Francesca Baines, she had a stretch of like six fifties in a row where she was 30.4 and then another stretch where she was 29.9. So the ability of these distance swimmers to just hold a steady pace for for 16 and a half minutes is is always so impressive and so satisfying to me to look at yeah um it's cool and then uh yeah moving on to the men's side the the distance king as we call him as his new name fabio delu from mckendry just a sophomore 1455 to win the mile broke his national record uh but just by a couple tenths so it wasn't a crazy crazy drop for him but uh but still to go 1455 and run away with it, winning, winning by about 15 seconds over uh, Andrej Zach from NMU. And uh, yeah, so it was just a great swim for him. And we haven't had any word on on Swimmer of the Meet, but Fabio, that was his fourth win of the weekend, 500, 400 IM, the 1,000, and then the mile, obviously, today. And so, you know, he if it would be a shock if he, if he didn't take home Swimmer of the Meet honors, and he certainly has my vote. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. He's obviously been working hard, and uh, he's thriving at McKendry. And um, what a what an unbelievable year with so many records in, in the hardest events. So, so hats off to Fabio. Absolutely. And McKendry had a had a really good last day, and we'll talk a little bit more about them as we move through. But the next event was the women's hundred free, and uh, pretty much as close as you can get here, Lexi Baker. Senior from Queens outtouched her teammate Danielle Malilli, uh, forty nine forty nine to forty nine five zero. So just one one hundred separated the top two, and uh, it was a really great swim. Lexi Baker was out a little bit slower, but she had a really nice second fifty coming back in twenty five seven to to get the win her senior year, which is which is great. Always work on your finishes every lap <laughs> in <laughs> practice because you never know when that one one hundredth is going to pay off. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't breathe flags to the wall. I remember that was the first thing I learned when I joined my summer swim league when I was like 12 or whenever I started swimming. And my coach said, if you breathe from the flags to the wall, you're going to lose a race. And you don't do it. You just don't do it. So Lexi Baker, listen to her summer coach for sure. Um, And then I would say probably the swim of the evening was Carol Ostrowski, the sprinter from Drury. 41-2 41-2 in the 100 freestyle, breaking his own national record and completely dominating the field. I mean, he was out 19-8, coming back 21-4, was a full second and a half faster than Matej Dusa from, from Queens. And so those two freshmen are going to be, you know, in a good battle for the next few years. But, I mean, Carroll is just so, so dominant. Ah, 41-2 is really good. It's his freshman year. He's got a beautiful stroke. Um, wow you know, coming off Corona in a Corona year. It's just really, really fun to watch. So well done. Yeah. And then For like, Carol. absolutely. And like, like I was saying about McKendry, uh, we had uh, Greg Lashinsky uh, Jr. from McKendry finishing third in that race, 42-9 to kind of uh, 
pretty much solidify that that fourth place finish for McKendry. I mean, they had a great a great final day and um, were able to solidify fourth. And we can talk about talk about those scores um, a little bit later. Uh, moving right on, men women's two hundred back, Katie McCoy from Indianapolis. This was Indy's second uh, second individual title of the of the weekend fifty six one fifty six three beating out Queens's Rachel Massaro. Um, but again, Queens had Queens finished second and third in that race. And it just, it just, you see it event after event is that they have the depth that nobody else does. Nobody else can match where they have two or three girls in every, every a final. And it's just hard to compete with that. Yeah. Yeah. They're so deep and they, they, they always have one or two in the console too. And, um, but a, a nice win for juries, Nathan Baghetti in the 200 back one forty three five. He, um, uh, put it out there out in 49, eight and just had a really nice swim. And I remember him a couple of years ago when he was at Henderson state and he looked really good, but, but the switch to Drury has really worked out for him. And he comes away with a national title, which is, which is cool. Emmanuel Faba, Delta state just behind him, 143.8, and uh, Giulio Brunoni, another Delta state guy, 145.1, the third. So, uh, yeah, good 200 backstrokes. I love that race. Absolutely. And Baghetti was, uh, I believe he swam from lane one. He was a little bit slow in the morning, but took two seconds off that time. So he was he was probably just relaxing in the morning, but he figured it out tonight to to get the win. So I love that. Um, women's two breast. Beck Cross got her, I believe, second win of the weekend, 213-5, um, beating out Claire Mike Sell from IUP, who was 214-4, and then Ann Sophia Nyson from Wingate, two fourteen five. Um, and uh yeah, it was it was a great swim. Lily Bor- Borgenheimer from Colorado Mesa was top seed going into the night, and she fell off just a little bit to finish fifth, uh, two fifteen eight. Gosh, two twelve nine in the morning. That's still really good for Lily, and um, yeah, she'll have another shot at that next year. And we just we love Colorado Mesa and Coach Mickey because they're in our conference. So you'll do it next time, Lily. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But still, I mean, obviously she didn't get the title, but I believe the fastest uh, the fastest swimmer in the country this year for Division Two. And you know, it's a little sour not to not to do it when it counts, but still an amazing swim. Yeah. And a huge Bre- swim. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Josh. Go ahead. Felipe Pinero, the freshman from McKendry, goes 155.8 for the win. Wow. So uh, he put it out there, 55.9. He was he was uh, out quick. Jao Santos was the first out at the halfway, 55.4. I think he did that in the 100, too, and got caught by Gerald Brown of Lindenwood. But um, yep. those guys, you know, weren't really a factor in the, at the end of the 200 here. So. <laughs> Yeah, they got the the sprint gene, but that's okay. Still were able to both go 158. Um, but yeah, 155 eight for Felipe. Again, McKendry stayed hot. And I do want to point out too, McKendry only had, I believe, seven men's swimmers and were able to finish fourth at this meet. And with Queens and Indianapolis and Drury having full rosters, it's it's really impressive that they were able to compete at the level they were just with seven individual swimmers. Yeah, absolutely. So it doesn't take much if they all get in the final at night and do their thing. So, uh, so hats off to, to McKendry. Um, we 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 think the think the world of Coach Jimmy and and Coach Nathan. So it's pretty cool. Um, in the women's four hundred free relay, it was a really nice job by Indy, just having some nice nice solid swims 49, 49, 50. 1, 50. 4, and um, just some nice depth to overtake Queens and Drury. So that was that was pretty cool. Queens was uh, two seconds behind in three twenty one, and Drury three twenty two. Um, so those the, all those girls did great. Lots of forty nines and fifty points. So which is just so cool to see at Division two. It's really really fast. Really good depth. Absolutely. And then to fi- to finish the night, and uh, I think at this point it didn't really matter what happened as long as Queens didn't DQ. Um, but but Drury actually won the, the men's 400 free relay 250.9, just one second off the, the NCAA record with a 41-1 anchor from Carol Ostrowski. Again, um, staying very consistent, but they were 43-3 from Alex Bowen, 43, 42-9 from Cam Glass, 43-6 from Ahmed Wabi, and then a 41-1, obviously, as an anchor for Carol. And uh, yeah, it was a great relay. 250.9 is, is very, very fast and uh, beat Queens by over a full second. They were 252.2. Two. 
to uh, to close out the meet. So really, really good swim for Drury. Yeah. Um, Carol wasn't the only fifth 41. Uh, Matej Dusa of Queens went 41.9 on the second leg. So that was cool to see. But man, Carol Ostrowski out in 19.6 back in 21.3. And um, just a beautiful swim to uh, to bring Drury home for the win. Um, and then Lindenwood was third, 254, which is still good. Delta State, 255. Wayne State, 255. Indy, 255. McKendry, 255. So just some, just all these guys were really finishing strong. It was, it was a great um, meet. Glad it, there was no more tornadoes. Glad there was no more COVID pullouts. I'm glad it would, it, the meet happened because it was, uh, it's been two, exactly two years since the last one. So so overall, yeah. I think there were some very nice swims and uh, some great rivalries. And uh, I can't wait for us to be there next year. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a great way to finish. And it's got to feel good knowing that, like you said, the meet actually happened. And, and especially the first day when there was the, some of the weather stuff, you thought, oh, man, is it going to be two years in a row that we don't have a meet? But, um, but we had it, and it was great. And uh, Queens women ended up winning. Drury was second. Um, Indianapolis third. Lindenwood fourth. And then on the men's side, Queens also won on the men's side, just beating out Drury by by 30 points. So Drury had a great last day to close the gap from about 70 to 30 today. So they, they were able to make up some ground, just not quite enough. And then Indianapolis was third, and McKendry was fourth, like we said. So all around great, but Queens, Queens stays dominant. I believe on both men's and women's side, that is five or six national titles in a row at this point. Jeff Dugdale and his staff do a tremendous job getting these athletes prepared. So very, very cool. They deserve it. Um, so that was cool. Day one, excuse me, day four of Division One at Greensboro, North Carolina, was uh, had some great racing as well. Some exciting stuff. Uh, Virginia had the cushion going into the night. And as long as they don't really mess it up, it was their meet to win. And they kicked it off with a bang. Paige Madden of Virginia. Um, Easily won the mile in 1541, just cruising some 28s the whole time. Looked really strong, really nice. Uh, Evie Pfeiffer, I'm really proud of her, got second um, with a 1546. So, uh, again, just a lot of 28s, just a beautiful swim for her. A great way to finish her career at Texas, got valuable points. And then Sierra Schmidt, the uh, dancing warm up girl. She is, on, if you've, if you've, <laughs> Never seen her before her races. It is a sight to see. She's the dancing warm-up girl. And she it's plays awesome. her headphones and has got some music in her head. And that's how she warms up for her race is just some awesome, crazy dancing. It's pretty great. I think I think we should all strive to be able to be that carefree. <laughs> and, and maybe she's stressing, but you'd never be able to know because she no. is just busting out dance moves. She, like, that she doesn't care yeah. about anything when she's behind that blocks doing the dance routine. It is so awesome. So hopefully she'll keep doing that at uh, club meets now and USA meets. But um, so yeah, Tuner back was next. Phoebe Bacon with freshman from Wisconsin gets her done, holds on for a 148.3, but uh, Catherine Burkoff was out Really fast in fifty two five, but just just kind of hit a wall that last twenty five. So that was really an interesting race. Yeah, Phoebe was so dominant that last that last fifty. That really, the, I mean, the whole race was was great for her, but she really pulled away the last fifty coming home twenty seven nine. Ryan White got second um, forty eight nine. Freshman from Cal, Isabel Stadden, forty nine one forty nine six to get third, and then. Uh, Interesting. Emma Atkinson from Virginia Tech, just a freshman, finishing fourth in one fifty point four, and that was Virginia Tech's highest individual placing at NCAA's. And and just as a freshman, Emma did a wonderful job, and so she's going to be looking to capitalize on that in years to come. But I mean, it seems like Sergio has, you know, shaped up that team to a point where they're able to kind of contend on the national level now. Oh, absolutely! And their conference meet a few weeks ago was incredible. So, and I lo I love Sergio and. Yeah, he'll he'll uh, he'll make Emma and the rest of the team faster throughout the years for sure. Um, Hunter Free was exciting. It was another rematch between Maggie McNeil and Kate Douglas 
And um, I had predicted last night that Maggie would touch her out. And sure enough, that's what happened. I mean, don't get me wrong. Kate's amazing. But Maggie's got those dangerous underwaters and a little faster turnover. And sure enough, it prevailed 46-0 to Kate Douglas's 46-3. So, so Maggie, the junior just got her done by a little bit. Yeah. Really well swum. The whole heat was, was really impressive. Um, 46, 0, 46, 3, Isabel Ivy, 46, 9 from Cal Morgan Scott, 47, 4 from Alabama, uh, Kalia Antonio, 47, 6, Alabama, Kylie Alons, Cora Dupree, Alabama actually had three girls in this heat. And, uh, the other yeah. interesting note, thing to note is that everybody from this heat will be returning next year. And so there's not a lot of room Ooh. for anybody else to move up right now. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, when I saw three Alabama, I thought, oh boy, their four and free relay is going to be good. And, and it, it was good. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, 200 breast. You got to wonder if Kate Douglas should have swam the 200 breast, but Sophie Hansen was really tough. 203.8 is really nice. And then... Um, Ella Nelson, sophomore from Virginia, got the Virginia points as second, 204-3. Freshman, Mona McSherry from Tennessee, third, 205-0. That's pretty cool. So I love Coach Matt at Tennessee and what he's doing. But um, So, yeah, good. Alex Walsh, freshman from Virginia. That's no more Virginia. Well, there's three Virginias in that heat. Alexis Winger. So, yeah, they didn't really need Kate Douglas because they already had three. <laughs> three Cavaliers in there already. That's crazy. Yeah, they were, they were great. Ellen Nelson had a great second hundred, but just wasn't enough to, uh, to beat out Hanson to finish. And uh, moving on to our last individual event of the weekend, 200 butterfly, Olivia Carter was out uh, 53, six Olivia Carter won this event, but she was out a little bit, a little bit slow. Kelly Pash and Olivia Bray from Texas were both out and Emma Sticklin, all three of them, we're out 53. And so Texas was gunning. They knew they had to make up some ground if they were going to catch NC State. And uh, so they all took it out really fast. Olivia was controlled. And uh, Olivia was able to come back 28-3, 29-3, and finish 151-3. And so that was just a great swim for her. She's only a junior. She's going to come back next year and try to defend her title. But yeah, Texas had three up in that event. And uh, they, they got the points. But, you know, unfortunately... It was going to come down to the this last relay, and uh, Josh, I'll let you I'll I'll let you take this last relay. Yeah, I mean, if if Texas had to be within two places of NC State to get second place, and so if NC State got fourth and Texas fifth, Texas would get second. But if NC State got fourth and Texas was sixth, it it was over. NC State would get second. And so NC State went out like a shot and went a 311. And Texas, you know, was okay at a 313. So that was that was it. And so NC State was second. Texas was third. Now it was just a matter of watching the last heat of Alabama, Virginia, and California go at it. And it was pretty cool because Virginia's so tough, leading off with Kate Douglas. California's tough. Alabama's tough. And then Michigan led off with Maggie McNeil. I think Michigan was in that heat as well. But, you know, just Alabama was so perfectly uh, deep on this relay. And they did a super job. 47-7, 47-1, 47-9, and a 46-9. It was just an awesome relay. There was no weaknesses at all. And, um, you know, Virginia was great, but they just couldn't hang. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, it, and it didn't matter for Virginia, but for Alabama to get there, I believe that was their first title, their first national title. Um, so that was a huge deal. And you saw three up for them in the hundred free. And so you knew that they were going to challenge. And uh, yeah, it was it was it was a great relay, great finish to the meet. And uh, Virginia, like I said, they didn't need that last relay. They were in a comfortable spot and they ended up winning. 491 points for Virginia to NC State's 354. So won by almost 140 points. Virginia's first national title, Todd DeSorbo's first national title. And, you know, it feels like there may be more to come with that. But NC State finished second. Texas just 10 points, nine and a half points behind, 344.5 to follow NC State. And so, you know, 
you wonder if a couple of things were, were a little different, a couple, maybe one or two more girls would have made top eight rather than the console final. Things would have been a little different, but um, overall a great meet. And I think one of Texas's highest finishes in, in a while. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been almost like almost 20 years since they were finished top three. So it's, so it's a big deal. And Carol Capitani swam at California. And so for her to place just ahead of, of, of Terry McKeever is a big deal. Um, Alabama fifth is good for them. So what's interesting, Stanford ninth when they had won the previous three or four. So it's just really interesting just to see how in just a few years, Virginia's boom. And then up at the top, Stanford's now ninth. And, you know, who would have thought that Virginia and, and Todd DeSorbo would, would move ahead of Braden Holloway and NC State like this? You know, it's just fascinating to see the recruiting, to see the training, to see the culture within each team and how it affects, you know, the final standings at the end of each year. It's just, uh, it just makes the sport so fun and exciting to follow. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, Stanford, Stanford is missing a few key pieces. Obviously Reagan Smith is committed there. Uh, Taylor Ruck redshirted the Norman sisters are redshirting right now. And so they are going to have, a really big bounce back year next year, I believe after, after this Olympic year, but again, not like not enough can be said for just how dominant Virginia was not even today, but this entire season, really, it seems it's felt like since, since day one, they've been ready and they've been the favorite to win this meet. And so, um, you know, hats off to them and just an amazing way to finish the season and, and really awesome that the NCAA was able to put this meet on, just in the in light of COVID and everything that's been going on. And it seems like they handled it very well and, you know, just an awesome end to a season. Yeah. So I'm glad we had the meet. I'm glad we got to see some of these great swims. I'm glad we got to see some records, especially the one by Maggie McNeil, 48-8, and uh, NC State breaking some relay records. So it's good for the sport of swimming, and it's good to ins- for us to be inspired by them and to get excited to get back in the water and train with our teams you know, over the summer. And who knows, some of these girls we might see at Olympic trials and the Olympic Games in Tokyo. So it's it's pretty exciting to see how these are nice stepping stones um, for our USA team in particular. But um, we thank you guys for joining us, joining Noah and I. And uh, we'll be back next week with more March Madness recap for men's Division I NC2As. So that's going to be awesome. And we'll have these little daily shows starting next Wednesday night and uh, you can catch us for our Monday motivation show as well so for Noah Yanchulis I'm Josh Davis and um, keep streaming and keep smiling we'll see you around the pool soon bye bye